What's up, y'all, and welcome to another episode, the most recent edition of the Matt Thalia Show. Today we have something a little special for you. We got, uh, we've got an episode, we're going to be talking about purpose, we're going to be talking about happiness, we'll be talking about the differences between those things, and I'm going to give you a little personal insight as to uh, some madness that's been happening, and how I'm sure, unlike any of you, that I am my own worst enemy. Now, I know that that doesn't apply to anybody that's listening to this show. All you guys are, are, you don't stand in your own way at all, ever, and you're nothing but, but the greatest facilitator of your best future possible. I know that. So, so you can just laugh at, at my self while enjoying all of, all of the free, non-obstacle-ridden path that your personality drives you. <laughs> so, um, so for the last two days, um, well, let's start here. If you didn't notice, this is a day late. So if you're, if you're new, you probably didn't pick up on it, but typically I try to get these out by Friday. Um, and it is Saturday now. So theoretically, if everything goes right, you're actually listening to this on Saturday, or it's at least available to you to listen to on Saturday. Uh, that, so it didn't happen yesterday. There was Thursday and Friday were actually really cool days. I, I was able to, to put a lot of focus in towards some projects that have been kind of brewing in the background. So I, I had started building these training programs back in the summer of 2020, probably around, um, July and August. And I really, I really went, went all in around August time frame, Um, and, and it was really good. Like there was, there was a lot of, there was a lot of growing pains naturally whenever you do something for the very first time and you're, um, you're starting from scratch unnecessarily. So as that may have been, um, but I, I wanted to, to do, to be in control and to know every single nut and bolt that went into the creation of this. So I didn't want to outsource anything. I, wa I wanted to do everything because I, I, I truly believe that, you know, if you're trying to start something, you're trying to launch a business, or you're trying to, trying to kick anything off, having an understanding of the way that all of the different parts of it works is is really really important especially for when you bring people on because it's very difficult to bring someone on and say hey can you edit these videos for me when you have no idea really what it is that you want or like you have a vision in your head but you don't really know what it takes to get there i mean make, i'm sure that that's fine and and those you can work out those relationships but but having being able to speak the correct language and being able to use uh, to communicate more clearly um, and to have better expectations um, in your head of, of kind of what it takes and what's required. Um, it's really, really helpful um, because, I mean, shoot, somebody might want to charge you a lot of money to do something that, that you could do on your own. And and maybe that's in your best interest and maybe it's not. Um, but, it, but it's up to you. But it's, it's hard for you to know that when you don't have any frame of reference, when you don't know the amount of time, effort, or energy that is required in order to create something like that, to create a product or whatever the case may be. Um, and so it's, so I, so I, I really, like I was saying, I really, really went to town on these things and I really like put a lot of time, effort, and energy into it. And I had a couple of courses essentially built by the end of August but what happened was I rolled straight into a semester in, in college and where calculus just took over my life. Like I, all spare minutes, any spare minute that I had that wasn't devoted to my my job or my schooling was then put into like family and then trying to make sure that the podcast was released consistently on time the same day. And you guys saw, those who have been with us through this journey saw that that wasn't always a successful endeavor. And so um, I think the, the theme for me and what really carried me through those times was keeping in mind that perfection can be the enemy of good. Um, um, perfection can be 
the enemy of complete, of progress, of, of, you know, publishing. And so, and, and there's, there's a fine line. This goes back. I've really, I really love the episode that, that we had on, uh, walking the tightrope. I think that that was a great one. And for anyone that didn't get a chance to listen to it, I, I strongly encourage you to go back and, and take a listen to that episode because, that tightrope really underpins everything that we do because there really is a balance, right? There is, there's a, you can't, you, it's easy for some people to say, yeah, that's good enough. Let's just put it out. And, and what they're putting out isn't actually great quality, right? There's, there's not a lot of value in what they're putting out. Their problem is not perfection is standing in the way of, of production, right? That's, that's not the issue at hand. So, but, but in their case, if they're putting out a bunch of less than desirable goods or materials or services, um, then they're, they're, they're leaning the pull that they're using to balance themselves on the tightrope is leaning a little bit on, on the heavier production side and not so much on the perfection side. And so I, I, I am not a person who consistently leans towards the perfection side or towards the production side. I'll bounce back and forth. And <laughs> what I just did over the last 24 to 48 hours has been, uh, I don't know. I, I feel like it's been like a little bit leaning on the perfection side, but there's, there, I'll tell you what lights the lighting in this studio and trying to set it up for the training program that I that I was just recording for uh has been an absolute catastrophe <laughs> just just a bloody nightmare and uh and it's no nobody's nobody's fault but my own and and I I took um I took a, I took a photo I'll see if I can I can get it in here of of myself after I reconfigured the third entire shooting session uh shooting configuration where all the lights were and all the cameras were and and where the whiteboard was and where I was and like after the third time and where it just did not work where like lights are bouncing off of the 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 whiteboard and and reflecting off my glasses and uh and all of this all of the the little things that stand in the way that one might consider like oh that's perfectionism but on the other side it's like for me, when I was looking at them, like, no, I want people to be able to focus on the content, right? Like if I'm not, if I'm not clearly providing value in a way that is unrestricted and, and unobscured in an un, unobscured way as possible, then I'm not doing my job, right? So, so it's one thing to, to uh, cease and halt production and, and everything for that. Um, and it's another to, to kind of keep finding a way to, to get to the end state, right? So it's, again, you're, I'm walking the tightrope between, okay, well, I want, I, this needs to be done. This, I have a deadline that I have imposed, you know, and it will be done by X date. And so I need to ensure that it gets done by then, but I need to not get caught up in those things. And so it's, then it turns into an efficiency play, right? Like how efficiently am I going to choose to, uh, to attack these problems and which problems are problems that are actually worth attacking. So all of that goes, goes back to, you know, I, I had to take this break, you know, or I chose to take a break from pursuing the training side of, of my business, um, to focusing just on the podcast and making sure that there's continuity there. And, 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 in that making sure, like making sure that production's happening in a way that was quality enough that that was worthy of your guys's attention. And so I hope that it was the fact that if you were there then and you're still here now, I, I it was probably just good enough to to keep you coming back. So thank goodness. <laughs> uh but now I'm able to to reinvest and 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 put the time and energy back into these these projects and into the training program where I can really spend a focused amount of time on a particular topic uh, and really break down like the tangible, practical steps to a lot of these things. Because I see this, what we're doing here, I see this as um, as like a casual conversation where we're able to, to bring up uh, these topics of, of resilience and motivation and grit and determination. We're able to bring all of those things up in a way that, that 
maybe you hadn't heard before, or maybe it's it's taking something you have heard before and it's casting it in a new and different light, or it's more um, more practical to you. It's more um, implementable in your life, and it just it just makes more sense. You get you get some clicks. So I just like to present these things that we've probably all heard, or maybe we haven't, but present them in a different way or in a new way. That's um that's that's that helps you to take that next step and whatever it may be you know i'm i'm not motivated to get you out of your career and to get you working somewhere else you know i'm motivated to get you to to pursue your passions right and and then you i in order to pursue your passions you have to understand what you're passionate about in order to understand what you're passionate about you have to you have to get to know yourself, you know, you have to spend some, some quality time getting to understand kind of who you are and what drives you. And that gets us to the conversation that I wanted to get to today, which is all about purpose and happiness. Now, both of these things are incredibly important. I think that, I think that we are getting to a place now where we are starting to understand that purpose plays a very critical role in our level of contentment, in our level of happiness, in our level of satisfaction. Now, I say all of those different terms because some people will use them synonymously and, and, and others will, will not. And I I try not to use them synonymously. I actually really try to be, be, really particular about when I'm using each one of those, but purpose is a feeder for each one of them. And it's really, I I see if we're going to pursue, if we're going to take our time and invest our time and energy into something, I think that it's really important to do that in a way that is geared towards fulfillment um, that is geared towards satisfaction. To me, satisfaction is a, is a a larger, more powerful version of happiness. Happiness is is simple, and it's um, I don't want to underplay happiness because it's because it's a really important and powerful emotion. And what I think that we kind of mess up when we're thinking about happiness is that we we. We over nounify it, if you will. Uh, I actually heard I was listening to an interview with Simon Sinek and Darren Brown, um, and Darren is actually if you guys have ever seen the Netflix special, uh, I think it's called Push or maybe it's The Push. Uh, he did that, and there was another. He did another one, and there was another one that I don't think was even on Netflix. This, at any rate, he's um he's kind of like a a mentalist a magician, a performer, uh, but he's really, really good at creating these, um, these experiments, these like really fully encompassing experiments. And the experiment will be, it'll be massive. It, it, it's, it's world altering. Like he creates this entire world where there will be tens, hundreds, thousands of people involved all to convince one person that this scenario is really happening. Like it's, it's something phenomenal. If you haven't, if you're not familiar with him, Go to Netflix, like pause this now and go to Netflix, find push or the push for, look for Darren Brown and, and add it to your list because it's, it's worthy of your time. It is, it will deliver entertainment and it will deliver value in in a very profound way. It's pretty cool. But when he was talking that he actually wrote a book, I think it was called happy something like that. And I think he wrote like a little book of happy too. (laughs) And so I think he's got two happiness books out there. And the way that he talks about it, it's really interesting because, uh, he, he talks about it being a noun. And I think, I think what he's getting at is that we look at happiness as a, um, as a state, as a, as a place to get to. It's like, it's like a mountaintop, right? Like you can climb and you can work and you can aspire and you can get there. And once you get there, boom, then you're on top of the mountain and when you choose to get off the mountain is when you choose to get off the mountain, you know, and, and that's when you get out of happiness. What he, what he says and what, and where I'm, I'm coming from is that that's wrong. Happiness is, is much more fleeting than that. It's not a state. It's not a, it's not a place that you get to. 
you know, it's, it's, um, it's a result of actions that you take, right? It might be a result of getting to a place. It might be a result of, of getting, of accomplishing something. But the thing is that, like I said, it's fleeting. It, it doesn't, it doesn't stay there. You can, if you go, if you've ever had a really big project and you're working on it and, and like say a presentation for work and, and you've put all this time and energy into it and you're working with a team and everyone's getting input and you're coming together for like rehearsals and, and you're scrubbing the, you know, the, the slide deck or whatever, you know, the case may be that, and eventually you get to the point where like, okay, we've got it locked down. Let's do this. And then you, then you present and then the presentation goes really well. And, and everyone's like, yeah, no, that's great. Like, let's, let's do, let's take your recommendation. Let's roll with it. That's awesome. Victory, right? And like everyone's, ah, that's great. Let's do it. And so, um, then what happens, right? Like your, target now shifts now it's like okay now it's implementation let's implement the plan um but that happiness might last for like that even like you'll take your your crew out for some drinks at the bar to celebrate the the kind of big project that you got that just culminated in the in the successful adoption into the into the organization that's great that next day that happiness that same level of happiness is it's gone like it's not there anymore and 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 it's not it's, that's not a that's not a bug with you. It's not a bug with humanity. It's simply the fact. Like it's simply we are not built to rest on our laurels. Like that's not how we are designed to be. And it's because resting on our laurels does not promote survival. Right? If we if we caught the if we caught the buffalo or we we caught the deer and we're like cool job done son i'm out like that's gonna feed the people for a little bit but it's not gonna feed them for a prolonged period of time and it's not going to it's not gonna last and then there's then we're not gonna survive if if that was the way we were built we most likely wouldn't be here right now and so all of these caveman-esque these early on developmental aspects of us are, are still very much what exists today it's that we In such a short period of time, we've gotten so far removed from those basic realities of survival that now those those survival instincts, the way that our brains are wired, are functioning within this non-survival based world where where your survival, we we place the same value of of life or death on success or failure of of a meeting you know (laughs) so it's it's not the same thing and it's good to put that into perspective but it's also good to know that we're wired that way like we're we're built to to take things seriously like that that and and that's okay you know and it's and it's good to be able to inject some levity and some lightheartedness and i think that it's very important to not take yourself so seriously to be able to crack jokes and everything but to try to disown that reality is not beneficial for you and it won't really work out in the long run. So it's really important to acknowledge those things. And so how do we take that into consideration? How do we make this practical? How do we go from the abstract to the practical? Um, I'm really, really, really good at, at communicating and discussing things in the abstract and I'm terrible at operating within the abstract, right? Because, you know, it's abstract. <laughs> you can't touch it. And so I'm, I I need real tangible things that I can like really put my fingers into and, 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 you know, wrap my arms around and then I can operate, you know? And so I really appreciate operating tactically and tangibly in a way that, that promotes those the kind of more abstract ideals or, or goals that are in mind. And I think that's kind of the way that, um, you can set your system of operation up in a way. That's the way that I set my system of, of, of operation up, my goals and my targets and my benchmarks, where I can set those up in a way that is really beneficial um, and, and leads to tangible progress and, and things that you can track. And so when we look at trying to create scenarios that produce happiness, we need it's it's kind of counterintuitive because you need to not focus on the things that that specifically individually create happiness right it's you you need to take a step back and look at purpose right and that's that's where 
we get our kind of our guiding light, our beacon, our, our the, the lighthouse that provides us kind of like the mooring of where we need to go. So our purpose is like the abstract. And so, and, and then happiness can be derived from actions and the practical and the tangible. And if we're trying to figure out our purpose, it's, imper- it's important to understand like, what is purpose? Where does this come from? And, and purpose is, it's the idea of usefulness or um, of design, like why something exists. And so when we th- like think about a hammer, a hammer exists to hammer nails into wood. Why do nails exist? Nails exist to be hammered into wood by hammers, right? Like that's, this is, this is their purpose. Um, and so when you think about your purpose, it's interesting to look at a hammer nail analogy because a hammer isn't much good without a nail and a nail isn't much good without a hammer. When we think about our purpose, it's very, very important to think about the world around us, right? To take ourselves out of the vacuum. A lot of people that are in my uh, niche, if you will, that that communicate about about grit and motivation and doing the work, um, a lot of them focus really on on how do we help you? How do we get you right? Because once you're right, then you can then you can help the world. I think that there's a there's a piece that's kind of missing from there and it's it's the fact that we're we're trying to take something out of a vacuum. We're trying to take something out of its environment. We're trying to rejigger it, you know, make some fine tooth comb adjustments to this thing and then to put it back into its environment and see what happens. Now you can do that. It is a way I just, again, it's, you're, you're fighting the natural current of the river. And it's like, why would you swim across the river? Or why would you swim upstream when the current's flowing? Like, why not look at the current that's flowing and say, oh, well, if I swim with it, I'm going to go really freaking fast. You know, I got some considerations to take when I'm jumping into the water here, but I can use the momentum to my advantage. So why why wouldn't I do that? Why wouldn't I why wouldn't I try to take advantage of all the things that are naturally there? And one of the things that's naturally there for us when we're considering our purpose is is other people, is our community, is our environment. It is very 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 difficult to establish purpose without understanding the context of of your world around you. Like for me, my purpose revolves around this feeling of of being close to my spark. That's what I call it. It's it's the feeling that you get um, when like you're glowing, when you feel like everything is just is 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 you're hitting on all pistons and and you're shifting gears and it's smooth. There's no there's no you know chugging back and forth. Uh, you're just you're just firing on all cylinders and. People will literally tell you that, like, man, you're like glowing right now. Like, what is up? And it's, you know, I've, I just, just cut a video where I talked about this really, you know, finding your spark. Uh, and it's, it's, it's really important to me because it was very powerful for me when I was trying to make changes in my organization, not with myself, but it was like, once I acknowledged that this reality, that this was a thing and other people were seeing it and other people were reacting and I could enter into other people's offices and they'd see me come in and they're like, oh my gosh, like, like they would light up and that would make me light up even more. And so, and I was like the high five king, I'm going around, we're high fiving everyone and uh, and it was great. Like there was just a really positive energy and, and it was reciprocal. It, it cycled its way around. So I, I got that feeling, I got that lit up feeling where it's super energized, like nothing could stop me when, you know, on my own, when I like getting close to my spark, but it was, it was enhanced and magnified when I'm interacting with others and they're feeling it and they're seeing it and it's, then it's bouncing back and forth, right? Then they're lighting up and it's making me light up even more like our light shine brighter together. And for me, like that's that's my purpose is I want to expand that spark. I want to help people find 
and stay as close to their spark as consistently as possible to get yourself out of the way so that way you can operate closer to your spark. And your spark, like for me, it is it is how I communicate and how I'm operating with other people. You know, and it's how and and so my purpose is the result is my impact on other people, my ability to get them close to that spark. And so like I you couldn't you couldn't ascertain that purpose without other people, without the environment. And so again, hammer nail. You have to have both. Like it's it just doesn't work without the other. And so when you're considering your purpose, you have to think about the way that you're interacting with the world. Like what is it that you enjoy? The chances are the things that you enjoy and the things that that drive you, the things that you see that that move you emotionally have to do with other people. It's very unlikely or, or uh, other beings. Some people are really they get that feeling, they get that spark with animals. That's why we get veterinarians, right? That's great. A lot of people derive a lot of happiness out of helping other people who have animals and helping animals, right? So this isn't this isn't static. This isn't like this is the way that it works. Like it's it's fluid. It's flexible for each person. But typically, for people being social beings, having our survival again, going back to our caveman roots, our survival depended upon one another. Our brains network together. Like we work together, and so our when our purpose was survival, and and. I have a subset purpose within that survival that my goal is to, or my purpose is to ensure that food is provided. Your purpose is to to make sure that we're defended. Your purpose is to make sure that the children are raised so we continue the species. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, everyone's got a purpose kind of serving that same goal. And so that's an interesting thing to look at when you, when you take it back to like an organizational level. And if you're like, if you are a leader of an organization, then you know, how are you defining your purpose? How are you defining your business purpose? Is it sell, sell more, sell the most, take over the world? Like we had talked, I talked about in a video a couple of days, or about a week ago. You know, it's it's good to keep things light hard and it's good to make fun goals and everything, but it's, it is important to clearly articulate what your purpose is. And, and, and the purpose, again, this gets back to like the static nature of happy. When Darren Brown talked about happy, he talks about happy ing. Like, you should be happying more. I think you should be purposing more. I think these things should be actions. It shouldn't be, their purpose shouldn't be, I want to be uh, the top performer in my category. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, we, I want to be the best company. I want to I wanna outperform these other companies. Blah, 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 blah. Like, no, it's like, what do we, what, it should be action words. They should be like, what, if, if I want to promote, loyalty it shouldn't be uh be loyal you know it should be tell the truth or like or you know if, if it's honesty tell the truth if it's be loyal like like respect family or you know whatever the case may be like find the thing that works for you in, in your organization in your life and and turn them into actionable statements turn them into things that people can actually do like oh like this says tell the truth so i should probably tell the truth you know, all the time. Like if, if I'm in a meeting and I don't agree with what's going on, I should tell the truth. And if somebody gets mad about it, like this is, I thought that this was our company principle. I thought this was like one of our guiding lights was tell the truth. I think that that's a, I don't think that's a good idea. And I think it's a bad idea because of X, Y, and Z. I think that this is a better idea. Um, and then the person can be like, listen, I appreciate the, a good leader in that situation would tell them, listen, I appreciate what you're saying and, and, and what you said makes sense. And maybe they maybe they rejigger the, the the equation. Maybe they figure something out. Maybe like, listen, we're, we're doing this. You know, like I appreciate what you're saying and, and what we're going to do is we're going to run this one through. You know, we got everything set in place. This is why we're sticking with this plan and not altering the plan. And, um, and that's what we're going to do. And at the end, we're going to look at the results and we'll see what works and what didn't, you know? And then we, and then after that, then we can reassess like that. That's, that is a way to embrace those things. That is a way from, from a subordinate level and a leader level to embrace those types of, um, philosophies, those types of, of purpose. Right. And so again, purposing action oriented, and it's, when you are purposing, right? When you are 
in pursuit of your purpose, then you're going to have happiness as like a natural fallout. So instead of pursuing those things of happiness as a as as the goal, it's like, well, when I hit these benchmarks, when I hit these key moments and these key events along my purposing route, I'm going to have these feelings of of extreme happiness because my actions and the results are things that matter to me. And and when I accomplish those things, it feels good personally because I know that I'm I'm taking action and I was successful. I was successful in something that I really care about and now I like and I'm happy about it. And the cool thing about about instead of pursuing happiness, pursuing purpose is that it keeps it from you having that mountaintop experience where you climb the mountain and like you had to take these different paths in order to get there and you know you rolled your ankle and then you strapped it up and you you recovered and you're and you kept climbing and and it was cold and and it was and then it was hot you know and it was like you go through all of these different struggles and your pack is so heavy and you finally get to the top and you're just you're sweating to, you know just sweat pouring down over your eyes and and you see the sun from the top of the mountain and you had this amazing life-altering experience of 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 happiness that comes with having accomplished that goal but what purpose does is that it it sets it, it turns that mountain from a singular peak to a mountain range right it's we're not we're not done right like this was one objective like the purpose purpose is never complete purpose if your purpose is completable then it is it is not founded on a uh, on a logic it's not it, its foundation is not set up in a way that's the most conducive to your long-term success now you should absolutely have tangible real life benchmarks and real life targets that you're pursuing in, in in pursuit of your purpose in your purposing so because if you don't have those targets it's hard to know if you if your purpose is is set right if you are actually making gains if you're actually making progress in the pursuit of your purpose if you're purposing right you know and so if i'm like i really want to help people and that's my purpose. Like, okay, that's really general. Let's set some let's set some specific targets in there. Like, well, I want to make sure that homeless people um, are taken care of. Like, okay, that's also that's great. That's then we're getting a little bit more specific. What do you mean? Like, are we trying to get them in homes? Are we trying to get them jobs? Are we trying to f- like battle drug addictions? Are we trying to get people with uh, mental illness disorders help and treatment? You know, and it's like I want to I I want in my city, I would I want to reduce the number of people that are sleeping on the street. Okay, cool, got it. Now we can figure out different paths to pursue this problem, to pursue the 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 purpose, which is getting people to help people by by getting them in a position where they're no longer sleeping on the streets at night. Okay, cool. Now I could say after three months of of work on this we took x y and z path you know i i and in at the end of this quarter i can say that you know 25 people that were homeless that were sleeping on the streets are no longer sleeping in the streets you know and and they're consistently they're housed in a place that's that's going to provide them the opportunity for the next six months to be able to to get themselves you know on their feet and employed and paying their own rent kind of a thing you know whatever the case may be homeless is a homelessness is a it's a very serious very complicated issue but it's just i'm just giving you a for instance i'm trying to make this as tangible and practical as possible because that's again that's that's what it's all about here and i think that whenever we're determining what our purpose is you know it's we have to get back we have to get close to our our core beliefs, right? And this goes back to the beginning when I talked about getting to know yourself better and, and, and trying to understand 
who you are better. So if you're if you're in a position where you you can't clearly articulate your core beliefs in a meaningful way, in a in a way that that would make sense to to anybody off the street that would just hear it, um, then then it it's going to require a little bit of time, and it's going to require a little bit of reflection, and and think about the times in your life when you've really really cared about something, when you were really passionate about something, and then really break that down. And one thing that I really like to do is the uh, the seven why tactic, and I'm I'm trying to remember where this originally came from. I know I've heard Simon Sinek say it. I know I've heard the um, the dude who works with Tony Robbins <laughs> lately, uh, the real skinny dude. Um, I know that he's talked about it. There's there's it's been around for a long time, and basically the the underlining idea is that take what you're doing and and ask yourself, dive seven layers deep into why why. Do you, if you if you say your goal your purpose is to earn a lot of money, okay, cool. Why? Why do you want to earn a lot of money? Like, well, I want to be able to travel the world and do what I want. I'm like, okay, cool. Why do you want to travel the world and do what you want? Like, oh, well, I want to. I want to. You know, I want the freedom. I want the freedom to be able to make my choices. And and w- one of the things that I want to do with that freedom is is to see the world. Like, okay, well, why why do you want to see the world? Oh, well, it's cultures the you know, I only have so much time left on on this planet. I know that it's limited, and I and I really want to make sure that I see as much of the world as possible. Okay, well, why do you want to see as much of the world as possible? Like, well, there's so there's so much to learn. Like, oh, okay, so you want you, you're interested in learning more? Like, yeah, yeah, I'm really interested in learning more. Like, why, why? Well, I feel like I, I I'm part of a global community, and 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 I want to be in touch with with all of my human brethren you know and you just keep going till you get to a point and you ask the question you're like oh so like connection so your your purpose is your driving motivational factor is connection all right well n- now we can use that as a way to to put your actions into place to to create the the infrastructure if you will that's going to facilitate you getting to that that part in your life because the thing that i've figured out is that in the pursuit of things that that you're passionate about in in the pursuit of of goals things often show up in ways that you would not anticipate and it might even be like you might get to that solution in a way that you didn't that you would have never thought you know, maybe somebody, instead of you um, earning the money to go and travel, maybe somebody's, maybe somebody's facilitating, maybe somebody's covering those costs for you because you're performing X, Y, or Z for them, right? Like, the, the world is crazy, but when you, when you openly put your, yourself out there, you're opening yourself up to these opportunities that that didn't that I won't I, can't, I won't say that they didn't exist before because they did exist before but opportunities that you couldn't see because you didn't put yourself out there. I, <laughs> in a in a very loosely connected kind of a way, I was just I had a I had a really hard workout day the other day and I was really really motivated to um to get to like get a really good sweat on and so I you know, I wrapped myself up in like multiple layers of thick clothing and I did some high high paced high heart rate kind of workouts battle ropes and um and rower and uh some other stuff I, I'm trying to remember but and and then I went to the sauna and I like wrapped myself up in all that stuff and like try to cut off as much you know of the releasing heat as possible and i went and went in there for like 40 minutes at like 150 degrees in an infrared sauna and then and then i went running hills in the backyard because we have our backyard goes straight into the woods and from from there it's uh it's you know it's there's like a creek that runs down and everything and so i'm going and the sun is going it's just about down right it's it was probably like 5 10 5 20 and right now in the in the dead of winter you know it's like that's like the sun's like i'm gone man but there was still enough left where it wasn't 
I felt confident, you know, I wasn't going to trip or fall or anything. With due to light, I trip and fall all the time. <laughs> but I had my cleats on, I was ready to roll. So I barrel out the back door, I open it up, and, you know, and it's actually fairly nice. It was like 40 something, 42 degrees out, which was really temperate, you know, for January in Virginia. So I go barreling down the hill, and, and we were used to seeing wildlife. Um, like we'll have foxes come up and, and we'll have, uh, you know, we, we put out a bunch of bird foods. We have all the birds come in. We like to watch them and stuff. That's really, I, I enjoy that. And, um, and you know, occasionally we have some deer, um, we, there's a, there's like, I think it's a groundhog. I think that's what it is. A big, big fat son of a gun that, that will come into the yard and eat the, eat the food and eat the plants that we're trying to grow in, in the summertime. But, and then, and then barrel his fat little body <laughs> out of the way. Um, but when I went, when I went and I busted open this door and I'm like running as fast as I can, getting ready to head down this hill, I get three quarters of the way down the hill and I just hear nothing but like movement just surrounding me. Like, like the earth is moving around me and just, and there's leaves all over the ground still. And, and, and I look up and I just see these deer that are just running around me and just sprinting like down the hill and running away. They're like, <laughs> They were as shocked as I was, if not more so, like, holy crap, where did this guy come from? And I was like, oh my god, that's so cool. Like, I just ran into the, uh, into a pack of deer, essentially, or a herd, probably not a pack, right? <laughs> but, um, and, and they were all, uh, they, it was just, it was, I remember thinking, as I continued to run, that that opportunity, like, that existed. They were there. Now, I had no idea they were there. I, and I, I'm, there was, you can guess that, yeah, there's, there's some deer, like I said, I've seen them back there, but I didn't see them that day and I hadn't seen them in months. And so I had no reasonable expectation that I was going to go see deer or go like be in the middle of a group of deer. Um, but it was a cool opportunity that, that I threw myself into because I was passionately pursuing something that I, that I really cared about. And it's not, it's not like I really want this to happen, but what a cool thing to have happen. And that, and the thing is that, that truly carries over the reality of that situation carries over to everything that we do. You know, when you're, when you are in passionate pursuit of something, other people see that and they feel it and, and they get attracted to you. I've had so many business, I've established so many relationships with coworkers when I was in the military of, of those people that are like, once they found out what I was doing and I was hosting a podcast and I had the, you know, this kind of business starting up. They were like, oh, I, and, and the fact that I interview, I was interviewing at that point, um, business owners and entrepreneurs and artists. And they were like, oh my gosh, you know, like I'm, I'm trying to do, you know, I'm not trying to do a pie, but like, I'm trying to start my own business. It's like, what did you learn? Like, what do you, what did you talk to these people about? And, and it, and it spurred on these types of conversations in a way that, that, you know, they were right there, but, but out of reach because it wasn't, it wasn't within my sphere. It wasn't within my reality because I hadn't gone down that path. And, I, and the thing is, I had been going down that path, but not open. I didn't tell anyone at work of what I was doing. And when I did, it was crazy. The reception started coming in. Once you put yourself as like this beacon where you're, you're willing to receive and willing to be open to other people's experiences in their life and, and to listen, it's amazing what comes back to you. It's really something special. And so it, this, this deer event is something that does carry over. Those, you wandering into a new beautiful opportunity, is it's there should you choose to accept th you know, the, the charge or the challenge of passionately pursuing your purpose. And so... I, I mean, I, all I ask of you guys is that you just think about who you are. You think about your place in the world. You think about your purpose. You know, what purpose do you want to serve? Now, what purpose do you think would look good to other people, would sound good to other people? Like, when you find it from your core, when you find the thing that you really care about, it, it's, it becomes magnetizing. Other people feel it. Right. And, and when you, when you gear it and when you sit down and really spend the time with your purpose and you figure out when you do your seven whys and you get that deeper purpose, that's, that's when it turns magnetic. That's when that beacon starts going out and those, and, and, and new signals start coming in 
relationships change. You know, people, right now, people really harp on making life changes because of New Year's and the resolutions and everything. We talked about the haters, you know, and rightfully so. Haters are going to hate and there ain't nothing you can do about it. But the thing is, people frequently talk about like, I need to cut these toxic people out of my life. I'm like, yeah, cool. Got it. You should do that. But what you should do, you shouldn't focus your energy on cutting people out. You should focus your energy on passionately pursuing your purpose. Because when you're doing that and you're doing it relentlessly, those people are going to cut themselves out of your life. Or, or better yet, better yet by a thousand, those people are going to commit with you. There was a movie... I forget what it is. I think that Yasmin watched it um, and she was telling me about it. It was a while ago. But there was a girl who set out to run a marathon and she was, she was big, big girl. And I I don't, I think if this wasn't a documentary, it was a, um, it was like based on a true story kind of a thing. And I think there were actually multiple storylines running simultaneously. And this was one of them, but they all kind of had this theme, if I remember correctly. And it's this girl was, she was, she's heavy, you know, she, she liked to go drink. She, she had worked in an office, I believe, and, and had a team and was friends with people that she worked with and, and they'd go out after work and they, they, they'd get drinks. They'd go out to eat at lunchtime and spend time together on the weekends and stuff. And, um, kind of like your typical modern American, um, nine to five person life, you know, like you're. Your free time is spent with your friends and the people that you work with because that's who you're developing relationships with. And and those people are, you know, your commonality is work and then you guys go enjoy some libations together and such is life. Lather, rinse, repeat. And until her purpose changed, her purpose shifted to wellness and I forget the catalyst. I don't know if she like gone to the doctor and they were like, you're diabetic, you know, or whatever the case may be. But her purpose changed. And she was like, I'm, I, I really want to run a marathon. And so I'm going to, I'm going to take the actions. I'm going to, I'm going to live the life of a person who runs marathons. And what does that life look like? Well, it doesn't look like the life of the of the person that she was before, it looks like somebody else's life. And so, so the actions are different. So when people are saying, Hey, do you want to go out to grab a bite to eat with us over lunch? She's like, no, I brought my lunch. Oh, okay. Cool. You know, do what about this weekend? You want to, you want to go and get some drinks after work or no, no, I I, I got to run, but Hey, I'd love for you to come run with me. Like if, if you're interested, like I'm trying to run a marathon and, and I think it'd be a lot of fun. I just, are, would you be interested? You want to come run with me? No. Well, why would you, why would you want to do that? That sounds awful. Why would I why would I go run for almost 30 miles when I could go put back a six pack? You know? I can go have some some sweet cocktails. Um that sounds way better than running. Cool. Okay. Like that's fine. Invitation's open. I'm gonna go run. Okay. Well these people, you know, you start to get ostracized. They start to cut you out. Your friendships start to shift because they don't fit in anymore. And they know it. And so rather than, and it depends on the person, you know, some people are going to join in and some, and some people are going to, um, they're going to lash out because they feel like you're trying to be better than them or, you know, you're not who you used to be. And, and, and to some extent that's true. You're not who you used to be. You are the person who runs marathons now. And when you identify yourself that way, and we talk about this all the time, but when you identify yourself as the person who runs marathons, then you do the things that the person that runs marathons does. You know, it's an identification thing. I don't identify with the person that goes out and, and has seven shots and three martinis and whatever the crap else. You know, I'm the type of person that got, ran, went and ran 10 miles last night, you know, on Friday night, because that's that's what gets me going. That's That is a target that I wanted to hit in the pursuit of this purpose of being fit, you know, whatever her higher purpose was, you know, health, wellness, that's, you know, these were feeders. And so a marathon was a big long-term target. That was a feeder event for the purpose of wellness, of health. Um, But those people 
are are going to cut themselves out and the people that you want to be with like you're naturally going to start picking that stuff up like the people at work that maybe you never even spoke to before are going to show up and they're going to say oh you run oh that's like where do you run oh, i didn't yeah no, no i've run over here like do you want to you want to like yeah absolutely i'd love to run together let's do that cool new relationships supporting the purpose attracting the beacon and when and that happens when you're not even overt and you're not going around and being the obnoxious person like i ran marathons like no you're bringing your gym back you know like you're like in the process of living that lifestyle like the things change like when you're eating when you're bringing in healthy food for lunch people see that healthy food they're like oh hey what do you got there oh that's interesting you know like i eat this like oh cool like you're attracting people that eat healthy just by simply doing what you do you're bringing your gym back like hey you you bring your gym back you you go to the gym you're gonna go run what are you doing you know and those those people that they know the people that are doing that they know and it's like you're it's like these natural calling cards and we're all very system oriented we're all very um uh, uh group oriented so we we want to be involved it's so it's so interesting because you you'll see people uh this just happened with me when i was out um when we did the the new year's ride and um motorcycle ride it was my first ever group ride which was terrifying <laughs> and it was freezing uh but it was it was really cool and and in the process i saw there was a dude um who had the name on on his cut that was said a uh, husker and i was like hey man are you from nebraska and he's like yeah lincoln and i was like i'm from omaha and like instantly bam connection you know why because and in a, for me, I'm in an environment full of people that I've never really met before. You know, a handful I've, I've met and had conversations with. But, like, I f you find that natural link and boom, there's a connection. Like, and, and, and that happens wherever you go. If you, if you are traveling and you're out of town, you've lived in the same place your whole life. You travel, you go out of town, and, and you're going to get away. But it's just, like, you or it's you and, and your spouse or whatever and you're there and you end up like meeting some people they're like oh hey like you're from wherever you know kansas city i'm from kansas city too or i got family in kansas city they don't even have to be there that's the crazy part they don't even have to be there for this to work it's we find that kind of like, oh my gosh we're like best friends now you know and like even though literally we could go back to kansas city where you're from and talk to 15 people on the stream like i don't like you i don't like you i don't like you but the fact that we met each other in this other place and we have that root connection, now we're best friends. Very, very interesting stuff, but it's the same thing. It's the same rule that applies when it comes to passionately pursuing your purpose. So when you, when your purpose aligns with other people's purposes, then it, then it, it, it creates the bond. It creates that, that community and it's something that's really special and you can't, you can't participate in that if you're not pursuing your passions if you're not pursuing your purpose then your actions like what you are doing what you are practicing is going to attract the that those people and so if, if i'm going out and getting mcdonald's for lunch you know i'm going to be attracting the people that go out and eat mcdonald's for lunch i'm not going to be attracting the people that that are consistently going out and running you know i might get like the guy one time you know like sometimes you get mcdonald's you know but if you're doing that consistently, like you're going to be rolling in different circles, naturally subsects of, of these groups of people. And so it's, it's, it's a great way to naturally find that community, you know? And then, and then there's, there's other ways to more aggressively find it. If you're looking to make that change and, and rather than looking to cut people out, don't, don't worry about going to somebody and be like, Hey, you're, you're toxic and I don't like you. You're not in my life anymore. Like you can look at what group can I join where they're, where they're doing that? And so that way, when, when times come up, you know, people are like, Oh, Hey, what are you, what are you doing this weekend with that person that maybe you consider toxic, maybe not even toxic, but maybe they just don't fit necessarily into what it is that you want to do. You're like, Oh, well I've, I found this running group and I'm going to go run with them. And then you can even, you can present them with the opportunity because if you really care about them and they're, they are a friend, like, I, do you want to come run with us? Like, I'm, I'm just starting, man. I'm probably going to make it a mile and fall on my face. Like, you want to fall on your face with me? <laughs> They'd be like, no. All right, cool. Got it. Like, probably going to be spending less time together now. And they're going to pick that up. They're like, oh, man. They're like, yeah, apparently fucking Susan just runs now. You know, she's a runner. And do you want to do anything else besides run? Like, yeah, when I'm done, when I'm done with my goal, like, I can let up the gas on this once I hit that marathon. But before then, like, this is, 
If it doesn't, if it doesn't fit into the puzzle pieces here, then it's not happening, you know, and, and it's easy to do that when you have a purpose and it's easier to do that when your purpose aligns with your core beliefs and your core values. And so if, if your core value isn't health, wellness or, or competitiveness, you know, doing well, you know, like those things combined, you know, it's going to be hard for you to, to be a runner. And it is, so it goes back, you know, like, well, what are your core beliefs? What are your core values? Let's, you know, let's find things that, that work well with those. And when you align your actions with your purpose, then that's, that's when magic happens. And that, I think that's what I got, man. I think we did about an hour today. I, I love you guys, man. I appreciate y'all. Thank you for coming back. This is going to be a great year. It already is. I'm super freaking pumped. And like I said, you got those. If you guys are interested, um, I'll link below to some of the training course stuff. Um, but more to follow. There's a really great training that's coming out that's, uh, that's that'll be free. Um, it should be available at... Um, I'll get you, I'll get the link. I don't think it's ready yet, but it's, it's going to be, uh, mornings with Matthew.com, something like that. Um, and, but yeah, and it's going to be a new morning routine, right? It's going to be how you can kind of start your day off in a way that's, that, that leads into the momentum that creates the momentum that can be carried in throughout the rest of the day. So we want to start creating victories. We want to start creating them early. The earliest you can do it first thing in the morning. So if you guys are interested, we'll, I'll, I'll give you more details as they come out. But if uh, nothing else, I'll see you guys here again next week. So, so keep your heads up, smile, and enjoy your weekend.